welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire, a video series devoted to A Song of Ice and Fire war game by Cool Mini or Not. We cover all aspects of the hobby with tactics and list build videos, painting tutorials of varying levels, and battle reports. In this video we're going to talk about my House Clegane list and go over some general tactics with him and talk about why I've built him the way that I have. I think uh, the mountain is a super legit commander and brings a unique play style to Lannisters that they don't seem to canonically have, or at least people don't conceptualize that they have available to them. And we're going to be kind of flipping some people's conceptions on the way certain units work. As usual, we're going to start with Gregor's commander cards because it's going to give us an idea of how we're going to shape the army to really take advantage of those synergies. The first one we're going to look at is probably his most simple one and more direct one, and that's Fury of the Mountain. This card triggers when a friendly unit makes a melee attack. Uh, when they do, they gain critical blow, but if they're a House Clegane unit, they get that on a... Uh, on a five instead of si or fives and sixes instead of just sixes. So right off the bat, we're looking at getting bonuses for Clegane, and that's going to be a theme we're going to see throughout his cards. The next card for Gregor is Orders to Destroy. This card really cranks up the power level compared to the last one. This triggers when you claim a zone on the tactics board. You can instead replace the zone's effect with uh, choosing a friendly unit and for uh, forcing them to make a melee attack, and if or then they get plus two dice. Uh, if you're a House Clegane unit, you get to charge instead and get those plus two dice. So again, more bonuses for being House Clegane, and we're, we're looking at some supreme out-of-activation business here. This is uh, sudden charge, kind of better and worse but still a really amazing card that you are not going to be sad to see typically since Lannister play a ton of NCUs anyways. Last up we have probably I guess arguably one of the best cards available to the mountain and that's Overrun. This triggers when a friendly unit destroys an enemy and uh, instead of making a maneuver they can uh, pivot and then take a free charge action if they're a House Clegane unit, they're going to get plus two distance on that charge. And this is really just pushing more out of activation charges, getting a lot of work done with not a whole lot of stuff. And we're really looking back into this Clegane theme that we're going to be exploring with the rest of the army build. So right off the bat, everything Clegane brings is combat oriented and really takes advantage of extremely aggressive units. So we're going to try and build around that, but first we're going to take a look at uh, his attachment card and see what he brings to the army being an on-the-table commander. Gregor ends up really tilting up the combat experience on his attachment. Uh, he char Whenever he charges an enemy, he automatically puts a panic token on them, and you're guaranteed to get that panic check to go off because he does D3 automatic wounds whenever his unit attacks as well. And then he has the added affiliation bonus where he turns any unit he attaches to into House Clegane units. So the first unit to discuss with him going into for this list is the Mountains Men. So he synergizes with them pretty well. He is automatically going to get everything he wants that the everything that the mountains men want them to want to do they want to make sure that their vicious goes off well he makes sure that it goes off the panic token makes it so that they could lose a lot more models with uh, vicious stacked in there so the the rough thing about this is that we're not going to get the house affiliation to do anything and he's that's a pretty big deal for this list since all of gregor's cards really get cranked up if you happen to be a Clegane unit. So we're going to scratch the Mountains Men from inclusion with him right now. The next one I'm going to look at and immediately throw out are the Gar Lannister Guard Cap, or uh, Lannister Guard. They're a cool unit. The The Lannister Supremacy is cool with the Panic token, but they're only speed 4 and we want a little bit more mobile unit out of this. I don't want to be trudging up the board at speed four with this mountain in the list or mountain in the unit not really getting to do what he wants to and the unit really doesn't have that much combat projection itself so i'm going to try and complement the build with him and the two units that i would look to for that are the 
Lannister halberdiers and the Warrior's Sons. The Warrior Sons are interesting in that they've got a decent attack stat. They're a little bit pricey on the points, but they've got a good morale, which is nice for him. And they have a decent save. The ability to use the Faith Tokens can really change the way that this unit works. Like, hitting on threes and having Sundering is super nice. And then having a three-plus save to your defense when you need it is good. The issue is, is that those... Tokens aren't something that we can really manufacture a lot in this list. I mean, we we want our we have to have our opponents attack us to force those tests, so they can control a little bit when we get those abilities. And uh, they're also finite for the attack that they make. So if we do something like target um, the warrior's sons with overrun after they kill something, if they happen to have sundering when they expended that uh, faith token they won't have it for the overrun charge. So you kind of have to have a couple tokens on them at all times in order to make them work well. And I just don't think that that's going to do it. So for this list, I'm going to attach Clegane to a unit of Halberdiers. They have a good price point, much better than the Warrior Sons. They have the same save. Their morale's a little junky, but they kind of make up for that by having a 774 attack stat. Uh, being able to maintain your combat prowess throughout the entirety of your first and second rank going down is super legit for someone like the Mountain, and they always have Sundering. And if your opponent somehow gets the drop on you and just wants to go right into the Clegane's unit, yeah, they're going to get attacked first, and that means that they're going to get panicked they're going to have the Sundering attacks, and they're going to get the D3 shot at them too. So they could easily lose a rank before they even touch you. So it's going to be really... Your opponent's not going to be very incentivized to charge this unit first. So easily, we get the House Clegane keyword on them so they can become a really nasty unit with all of those cards. To keep the Clegane theme rolling, I am going to add Sandor to this army, and I'm also going to stick him in a unit of Halberdiers. They really are the most combat-efficient army when you put on this Clegane lens with the Mountain's deck. Uh, they always have Sundering. They've got a decent speed. Their save and morale are really middle of the road. But Sandor also brings the Hound's Fury, which can really turn them up, whether they're engaged or charging. You get Vicious, with which the Lannister deck wants, and you also want to start doing more damage. And you also get uh, plus one to hit, which is really huge for these guys, taking them from... Uh, fours to threes. Now there's a little bit of uh, of a negotiation you have to make when you've got certain cards in your hand. So if you Hound's Fury and also have um, Fury of the Mountain played on that unit, you're, if you're charging, I know there's a lot of stipulations to this, but if you're charging and you have Fury of the Mountain, you play that card, you do Hound's Fury, you're hitting better and you're getting your, four, your fives and sixes, but with the way that the rerolls work, you might almost be better off not playing or, or not using the Hound's Fury on that one so you can get the re the threes can reroll for a chance to get a five or six. Uh, so it's just something to be aware of if you're looking for some outs. I mean, every situation is different, but for me, if I'm charging with this unit and I have Order or Fury of the Mountain in my hand, there's a good chance I'm not going to use the uh, Hound's Fury ability. We're going to kind of flip the order on the rest of the list build. Uh, typically, I would want to build the list out and then figure the NCUs later and then wiggle the points from there. But with this list in particular, I want to hit the NCUs first because I already have an idea of what I'm going to be backfilling with. And the first NCU that I want to look towards in is uh, Tyrion the Imp. And... The, it, it sounds a little bit counterproductive because what we're doing here is we're playing a very combat-oriented list. And Tyrion, the NCU version, really seems like he lends himself to a more controly list with you being able to alter what your opponent has in their hand. But the real big thing we're looking to get from Tyrion here is the plus one to hand size. The Mountain really wants to put a lot of pressure on the opponent very quickly because the durability of the army isn't real high and we don't have a whole lot of shenanigans outside of fealty to the crown to start healing up units so uh trying to get as much out there as possible as quickly as possible is why Tyrion's popping up in this list the next one i want to go for is tywin lannister 
Tywin has a really fantastic ability. Being able to shut down a unit almost completely and then panic it, or not just panic it, but put every single condition token on it, really lowers its efficacy, makes it more susceptible and more vulnerable to attacks. So when you're in the middle of an engagement with an enemy unit that is a little bit more uh, performance centered, like think of uh, sworn swords with a captain on them or something. So, or maybe something different, something better, like Ramsey will say. You can use Tywin to shut that unit down to make sure that they're not going to be effectual or effective this turn and try and take them off as quickly as possible when they're, when they're unable to really retaliate. So uh, I usually save Tywin for when I have access to the first turn so I can use him right away to zap something I'm engaged with and then take the swords to start bashing on that thing right away and then go back in to hit it again and hopefully chain it into an overrun or something like that. Then the last NCU that I've put in here, and this is mostly for points really, is uh, Pycel. And getting weakened in this army is a pretty good condition also. As I said earlier, a lot of the things that we're putting in here are going to be pretty susceptible to attacks. They're not, they're really the middle of the road units. So putting Pycelle and putting Weakened out every turn is going to make sure that you can just get them to last a little bit longer. So now that we've got the points settled out, we are just going to backfill with Mountain's Bend. And for this list, the way the points work out with the NCUs, we can shake in two units of Mountain's Men to make sure everything on the table is House Clegane. And then we have three points left over for attachments. The most important attachment that I think that needs to go on these Mountain's Men is Brienne of Tarth. And I think she is probably the best two-point attachment in the game. And... Being able to take the subpar morale stat and make it huge, or at least good. I mean, like a 5 plus morale is, is really decent. And then also she kind of controls your opponent a little bit without uh, directly doing so. Um, if you decide to mark a real combat-oriented unit or a unit that's a little bit harder to crack, they... They have choices to make depending on where you deploy and how you deploy. So if you decide to deploy Brienne early and right in the center of the table, that's going to not give your opponent much incentive to take that really uh, hard-hitting or really survivable unit and put them in the middle because getting to use Knightly Vow against them is really uh, not going to be great considering you've got Vicious and Crit Blow. Then if you decide to deploy Brienne later, it means that you're kind of controlling where your opponent's going to go if he's trying to, if, if your opponent's trying to dance around where you're deploying Brienne. I had one game I played recently where I did um, use Knightly Vow against a unit of Sworn Swords, and they were the last unit to go down, and I was still able to settle up right across from them because putting them on a flank would make them really not uh, commit to the game itself or the game mode. For the other unit, I have an Assault Veteran in there. And this is, you can get a little bit more customized with this one. There's a lot of other decent one-point attachments for Lannisters. Also, if there's another four-point NCU that you happen to be looking at instead of uh, Pycelle, you could do that switch and just leave those Mountains Men running without an attachment. I'm really open to either. The Assault Veteran didn't do much for me. When I in the few games that I've played with them, uh, usually when the mountains men are engaged, I guess eh, I remember one game where they were doing some decent work where the order get to got to go off a couple times. But going from threes to twos, it's not a huge deal. Although when you're engaged, I guess it's a uh, pretty decent. It means you're not going to miss regularly at all. But it really is just season to taste on that one and. The, the Assault Veteran really isn't a horrible option for you. And I do think that Pycelle is more so in this list because he's good for it than he's in there because the points just worked out that way. One of the things that I like the most about this mountain list is that it really turns the every single card in the Lannister deck on. Every single panic check oriented one, whether it's Hear Me Roar or Fealty to the Crown, 
gets turned on by most all of the units in this list. You've got Vicious, you've got access to Panic. So getting uh, Panic checks to happen is not uncommon. So uh, and, and also sandpapering down your opponent's uh, ranks is also going to very likely happen with how much you'll be attacking them. So Hear Me Roar and Fealty to the Crown really get a lot of mileage here. And also, when your opponent's using NCUs to try and bail them out of bad situations, Intrigue and Subterfuge can be utilized to help further the combat position in this list. Even the the, the more controly ones like Counterplot, you can really stop your opponent from doing a lot of things here. And uh, Wealth of the Rock is such an amazing card for this particular army. Um, there really isn't a single card in the Lannister deck that I don't want to see with this list. And I find that with Tyrion, I'm really burning through my deck fast because almost every single round, I'm unloading my entire hand, and oftentimes exactly the same the, the same cards that I'm picking up from the tactic zone are also getting burnt through. So it's not uncommon to go through, you know, six cards a turn with this list. Could even see making the one point swap for the assault veteran be pressed in Greenfield, just because you're you not only are you have the you not only do you have the chance to activate a unit multiple times here or take actions multiple times but you also are very likely to have the crown uh it's not it's just another way to get more wounds pushed out and be more aggressive and with the way you're playing your opponent's probably going to be sitting up on the tactics or they're, they're probably going to be trying to go for that coin position quite a bit and uh the others kind of fall off onto the wayside because a lot of a lot of people on average seem to play with two NCUs, so they're having to go towards the healing because they need it, and then the other zone that they want to take, they kind of have to make a choice between the two, and none of them are good because you don't want to leave the mountain player with the maneuver position to get retreats out and then charge back in after you've activated. You also don't want to give them the swords position because they'll just, you know, start push, pushing out more damage. The crown is the one that seems to be left alone the most, so having Kingsguard in this list really isn't a downfall for you at all, and having three NCUs makes it so that you can get that zone if you really need it. If you are looking for a solution or a better matchup into Night's Watch players, I really think you'll find a lot of uh, benefit here. You get a lot of attacks out, so you're able to flatline units quicker and spread wounds out so that you can make it more difficult for your opponent to really focus on healing one all the time. The only issue is that you don't have a ton of units on the table, so you have to really be mindful of where your activations and where your engagements are happening. But uh, I, I do think that this list plays well into Night's Watch. It plays well into Stark's. And uh, the only thing I think it might have an issue with is playing into Free Folk because they have a lot of concentrated attack power and not attack power that's kind of spread out unless you're overrunning frequently. But playing into Free Folk is, is strange because even if you have units that are meant to do a lot of damage, they need to at least do 12. And the critical blow can only get you so far, and the Halberdiers are not ever going to be able to sweep them unless they really roll bad on morale tech check so I would definitely have a backup plan for that as a second list but the mountain list is super fun to play in a competitive environment and it's also perfectly fine for any form of play really I don't think there's a scenario that it really struggles on maybe Feast of Crows or something like that but in general super great list and I hope you enjoyed the discussion if you liked what you saw here subscribe to the channel hit the notification button if you want to get direct contact from youtube whenever i post something new also feel free to check us out on facebook i post a bunch of random musings painting uh progress photos and a bunch of other just random thoughts uh, game of ice and fire also has a podcast which i will leave a link to in the description and feel free to listen to that if you haven't already. I'm just gearing up to get the second episode out there, so the, the long wait is almost over. Any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or on the Facebook page that's in the description.